So in this video, we're going to show you how to mount the load cells. We're going to walk you through the, some of the things you have to keep an eye out for that will make a big difference to your accuracy later. Um, I've, put, I've put a roller on this bracket and load cell, so you can see how this works. Um, in this case, I've put the load cell on top of the bracket making sure that I have clearance, that's important. And I've mounted the, bolted a roller to this load cell. And this is a very typical setup. Uh, many, many conveyors will have something called a belted chain. But in either case, those conveyors are supported on rollers like this. And we can mount the roller to the load cell and then the load cell will see the weight that's passing by on the conveyor. The Greentronics conveyor scale system can be used on solid belt conveyors where the belt is supported on a continuous slide or on tube rollers. It can also be used on belted chain conveyors supported by individual rollers at the edges of the conveyor. The provided template can be used to accurately place the holes needed to mount the load cells. Enlarge the original bolt hole so that there is at least 0.25 inches of play around bolts and or bushings. The larger hole size allows for the minute amount of movement in the load cells as loads are applied. It will also allow aligning the load cell or roller combination by shifting it up and down slightly. The conveyor in which the load cells are to be installed should have a sturdy frame to provide rigid support for the conveyor and the load cells, as any flexing of the conveyor support frame will affect weight measurement accuracy. The second load cell should be mounted directly opposite the first. It's important to take care of this cable. Make sure it, it's routed properly, it doesn't get chafed or pinched, and that you maintain its full length. Or at least try to have exactly the same length for both, both load cells in a system. We don't recommend that you cut this. If you have extra, just wind it up, tie it up with a little zip tie in a, in a protected place. Don't lengthen it either. If you have to lengthen it, let us know ahead of time, if you can, and we'll do it for you. So now we have the load cells mounted on the side of the, uh, the conveyor, and there's a few important things to know when you're doing this, and the two important things is alignment as well as clearance. So alignment, you want the load cells to be nice and level. The, the slides they're on and the rollers are on have to be nice and level. You don't want them at any weird, awkward angles. And then clearance, so the hole we drilled here for the roller and for the slide that's actually going to be mounted to the bolt on the load cell, the bushing that's in there or the roller, the bushing for the roller that's in there needs to have clearance. It can't be rubbing up against the side of the, uh, the conveyor at all. There has to be clearance all the way around it, enough for it to float free. Because if it binds or bumps into the conveyor wall, it's going to throw off your weights. 
The, uh, the th another thing to remember when you're putting on these brackets is you, don't, you want to take care not to over torque or tighten, the, tighten them too much because uh, you might add too much stress to the ends of the load cells. They are 250 pound load cells, so you'd have to put quite a bit of stress on them to, to hurt them, but we just say that just because when you're tightening away and you've got the leverage, sometimes you can put more force on them than, than needed. One of the most important things to know when mounting the load cells is clearance. So it, there needs to be clearance around the load cell itself in between the conveyor and the load cell. So this gap here, there has to be some clearance. There also has to be some clearance with this bottom bracket here. So you can see it's, it's away from the conveyor wall. So there needs to be clearance there, as well as the bushing that's actually we're bol that we're bolted to right now, there has to be clearance all the way around. So the hole you drill with the hole saw needs to be wide enough that the bushing has full clearance all the way around it. So there's the, the clearance up here on the load cell, the clearance on top with the bracket, as well as the clearance of the hole all the way around. The other important thing to keep in mind is alignment. So you want the rollers to be nice and aligned and level with each other. We would recommend that two rollers before and two rollers after your weighing roller, the roller that's attached to the load cell or the slide that part that's attached to the load cell, would be nice and line and level. And the reason for that is just to help with belt tension. So some people would think that the, the weighing roller actually needs to be a little bit higher than the previous ones. But the problem with that is if it's a little higher, the belt tension over the roller will increase. And if it's lower, the belt tension may decrease. And all of that varies depending on how much weight goes across. At the end of the day, it all just leads up to a less accurate scale reading. So we would say the, the best, for the best results is to have the rollers nice and lined. And like I said, we recommend two rollers before and two rollers after your weighing roller.